Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for To Your Eternity, Chapter 140. Uh, when we last left our heroes, uh, Tonari was kind of pondering her kind of bout with Fushi from a few chapters ago uh, and started to feel maybe some romantic vibes for him. She blames that on her body being brought back as a, as a preteen or a 14-year-old, I think she is, somewhere in that range, uh, back in the, uh, as a middle schooler. Uh, but either way, Fushi then, we then cut to Fushi talking to, uh, the Guardian Knocker, um, and they, there's just no understanding there at all. Uh, Fushi pushes back on the idea that coexistence is possible, and also is very, just does not understand how this relates to finding Fushi's soul, like the Knocker said that, like the Knocker said was their goal. Um, and we don't get an answer before Mizaha wakes up. Uh, Fushi kind of snaps at her and then disappears, runs away, contemplating whether or not the world truly is at peace, which it isn't. As I've said before, the knockers are still killing people, even if those people are suicidal, that still counts as killing them. Uh, and then he runs into Tonari. Uh, and I'm assuming this is going to lead into him finally admitting to the fellow immortals what is going on. Because that's also part of what's going on in Fushi's mind, is that he can't tell everyone about about the Knockers, or else he will destroy their peaceful lives. And so he's going to have to tell them. Anyway, let's jump right on into Chapter 140, Acting Human, Part 1. And our picture here looks like Funa, um, the, the girl who became a Knocker recently. Um, kind of upside down and nude, and there's like a hand kind of entwined with hers. I don't quite know what that's about. But either way, we open where we left off with Fushi and Tonari having run into each other. Uh, these two bystanders kind of gawk at them. Ah! Oh my! Uh, and Fushi kind of like rubs his head. Yeah! Jeez, watch where you're going! And Tonari snaps at him. I, I could say the same to you! Uh, and then she kind of turns to him. What's the deal with you never coming home? And you look like a total weirdo dressed like that right now. Um... <laughs> And she's, she's, she's referring to Fushi uh, wearing his, his normal, you know, 800-year-old clothes. Uh, and Fushi responds, yeah, I didn't feel like wearing those clothes Mizaha bought. Uh, and Tonari stands up and kind of dusts herself off. Oh, yeah? Uh, and Fushi gets up. Oh, right. Sorry about the other day. I shouldn't have used your friend's bodies without telling you. See ya. And Fushi's just going to leave. All of that, all of that, you know, drama, last chapter uh, promise sort of taken away. Uh, but Tonari doesn't let him go. Well, wait a second. I should be the one apologizing. I had this idea that their lives, that Upa, Mia, and, and Uroi were mine. But the time they spent with you was special to them. And I hadn't realized that they were a part of your life, too. I, I thought of them as my property. I mean, she's, she's kind of right, I guess, but also using using her friends' lives to to kind of hang out with the, the descendant of of uh of Hayase is not is still kind of a scummy thing. Um but in the end it's not too different than Fushi using any form. Um anyway, uh Tanari continues, your feelings are yours alone. As your friend I really appreciate what you did for them. It was wrong for me to control what you think in whatever form you want. So do as you like. Hang with Mizaha if you, if you want. Um, and then she kind of holds on to the friendship bracelet that Fushi forced Mizaha to make for her. Um, and then she kind of leaves it there. And that's about it. So I'm sorry, Fushi. I won't cry or yell at you anymore. Because I've got the heart of a warped, twisted old lady. Uh, and then she looks at Fushi, who's sort of, like, looking away. There's something about Tonari's line here that feels like a giving up on Fushi, almost. And I, I might be misreading that, but it sort of feels like, especially about I won't cry or yell at you anymore, almost feels like an I don't care, do what you want, uh, I'm out of it. Which feels like a bit of a, an emotional barrier. Like, especially what we saw last time. Uh, as she's sort of realizing she has some kind of romantic feeling for Fushi. Um, as, as complicated as that is, given her, you know, secret past as a, as a 60-year-old or whatever. Uh, not so secret past, actually. I don't, don't know why I said secret. 
but you know what I mean. Um, anyway, Fushi looks kind of uncomfortable at all this, and Tonari uh, turns to him. What's the matter? Fushi? Is something wrong? Uh, and Fushi just walks away. No, it's nothing. I'd better go. And Tonari runs after him. Huh? Not so fast. Is it related to why you haven't been home? And Fushi tries to brush her off. No, I'm gonna get going now. And Tonari grabs his hand. Tell me. You're a part of my life too. An important one. You mean a lot to me. Uh, and Fushi sort of like forces her to let go and says, Thank you, Tonari. And then he walks away. Um, Tonari calls Fushi. And he just, just sort of stands there. Um, and then I think we come sometime later. He has, in the end, just sort of left Tonari there. I really thought this chapter was going to be the big moment where he has to kind of come clean to the immortals. If that's what we're calling them. Um, the, the knockers are back. Their lives are not going to be as peaceful as Fushi wished. And there are still problems to deal with. Um, but sometime later, uh, as Fushi is walking, he runs into Bon, who tells him, Fushi. Uh, and Fushi notices him, Bon. Uh, and Bon tell asks, are you all right? You look pale. Uh, and Fushi just sort of stands there silently. Um, and then Bon, bon asks him, would you like to talk about it? And Fushi just turns him away. No, I'm fine. It's nothing. Which is, this is becoming a recurring theme now, Fushi. You have to talk to your friends. At a certain point, you have to talk to them about what's bothering you. And I hope that's what this whole arc is building to. That Fushi just has to sit down and talk and ask for help. Um, sort of sort of in a, in a fantasy uh, take of like, of Hachiman's arc in the second season of Origairu. Um, you know, eventually you can't keep carrying all this alone. You have to rely on others. Uh, I hope that's where Fushi's arc is going here. Hmm. Anyway. No, I'm fine. It's nothing. And then he continues, Bon, the knockers are bad, right? And Bon just asked him, what? Uh, and Fushi, please, just tell me they are. Uh, and Bon continues, yes, of course they are. Even if one's life is painful, that pain is still a part of oneself. No one should shoulder that burden for you. A person's existence should be affirmed based on everything that they feel. Uh, which is kind of the closest the, 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 you know, the last few chapters have gotten to a definitive you can't just kill people because they're suicidal. Which, like, it kind of boggles my mind that, like, Oima would even, like, play with that concept. Um, that question. Uh, but that's kind of where the knockers have put us. Um, there still is, I'm, I'm kind of and this might just be, like, my personal philosophy clashing with Bonds, um, that no one should shoulder that burden for you. I think what Bond is trying to say, or what I would consider to be an accurate version of what Bond is trying to say, um, is that you can't just have someone take away your pain, um, that, like, life is worth the pain, and you have to carry that pain along with the good parts. But it also kind of reads like you should not reach out for help. Um, you know, you have to carry all your pain yourself and you cannot rely on others. And given that Fushi's refusal to lie to rely on his friends is kind of becoming a crucial thing in this arc, I'm really worried at the very least how Fushi is going to take that sentence. I feel like that's going to be a moment that pushes Fushi away from relying on the immortals. Um... Anyway, Fushi responds with this really weird smile. I don't know how to read that. Um, like, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's this big moment of relief. I'm not sure what it looks like. But he turns into a bird and just sort of flies away. <laughs> uh, and then we cut to Izumi, or the Izumi knocker in, the, in reality. Um, as she sort of is driving her car, and it's found Mizaha. It looks like... Um, uh, still, still where Fushi left her in the tunnel, and Izumi gets out of the car. Mizuha, being out in this weather isn't good for you. Let's go home and have some nice warm stew. Uh, and Mizuha looks at her. Mama? How did you know I was here? Uh, and the knocker responds, because I'm your mother. Of course, in reality, it's presumably there's some kind of connection 
excuse me, between the, all the knockers, and that's how how the Izumi knocker could tell. Um, and then, anyway, Mizuha looks up at her, Mama, and the knocker smiles at her, don't look so sad. Let me guess. The boy you like gave you the cold shoulder? Uh, and then, um, uh, Mizuha sort of curls in a ball and says, Bingo. Uh, and Izumi responds, Oh, Lord, but you're perfect, Mizuha. All that matters is that you like this boy. That feeling is all you need. Let out all of your sadness and go back to smiling tomorrow. You don't want to waste your adorable smile, after all. That's some not unhealthy advice from a death-obsessed alien. Uh, or whatever the fuck the knockers are supposed to be. Anyway, Mizuha just finally breaks down. Mama! Wah! And she like, cries, cries with her mother. Uh, I can't make that crying sound not hokey. Uh, but it's not hokey in, in canon. Um, and Izumi comforts her. There, there. Uh, and just then, Fushi arrives. Uh, with his sword, seemingly pointed at Izumi. It's time to end your human act. And that's where the chapter ends. Human act, by the way, very obvious callback to the chapter title, Acting Human. Um... So, that sort of seems to be... So, given, given the, the chapter's final scene, I want to put my definitive take at the moment as to what... As to not, not what Bond meant by his, his statement, but by what Fushi got out of it. And I think what he got out of it is a good thing and a bad thing. We need to stop the knockers and restore the people that they have killed to, their, to life. That's the good thing but also that he has to shoulder that burden alone. Um, and that's the bad thing. So it's kind of one step forward and one step back for Fushi. He's kind of reassured reassured by Bon uh, that he's do in the right by keeping this secret from, from everyone. Um, but also he's confident again that the knockers do need to die. Um, that, 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 that if it, even if the knockers should, if, like, like, saying the knockers need to die for being knockers sounds kind of harsh, but, like, their M.O. is killing people. And even if they think they're killing people, killing the right people because those people want to die anyway, and as the Funa knocker said back in, I think, 139 or 139.5, I think it was 139, though, people who are, who, people who are committing suicide, people who are, are contemplating death are already dead. That's just, like, not true in any way, shape, or form. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my, my take on that final conversation, uh, between, between Bon and Fushi. Um, but again, he's sort of, sort of further entrenched in this idea that he has to bear this weight alone, uh, that no one can shoulder this task for him, uh, which I don't think is what Bon meant by it, but it's definitely what Fushi got out of it. Um... But feel free to to um, disagree with me in the comments. I, I want to know if there are any other opinions on that, because I think it's a sort of very vague conversation there. Um, but yeah, then we have this Tonari scene. that I've, I've been talking so much about the last half of this chapter, I sort of left the Tonari bit out in my, my thoughts. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's kind of in two parts. The sort of earlier scene that feels like a sort of... On one part, an apology that, like, you know, she doesn't own Upami and Uroi. Um, the, the, the time, they're not just her friends, they're Fushi's friends, too. Um, and any, any real discussion of this kind of, like, the, I, I think, I think there's an issue with the idea that Fushi is using them. Um, because then you have to start discuss, discussing, you know, who is allowed to use these people? Um, and that's just a thorny question. And I don't quite think it's right to say that he's using them. Like, they're, like, Upami and Uroi aren't just, aren't just, like, surviving in the back of, of Fushi's consciousness when he takes their form. They're dead. They're in paradise now. Um, and so, and so, so, Tanari is kind of right here to be like, they're not mine. Um, but also, I think 
she's I'm trying to find the right way to phrase this because it's a really weird thing. Um, I think her her argument here kind of rests on the idea that they are all they are hers and Fushi's, when in reality, the the ownership of them doesn't really come into play. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm focusing on something that doesn't really matter. My the important thing is that it does sort of feel like, um, well, at first it felt like she was kind of giving up on Fushi, but then she has that final bit about you're part of my life too, an important one, you mean a lot to me. And then Fushi just kind of rejects her almost. Like right after that, their final, the final part of the chapter is Fushi knocking her hand away, thanking her and leaving. Um... And, like, I just, it's not just because I want Gugu to be important again. I love my dragon boy, but it's not just him. Um, it's also just, like, Fushi kind of, I kind of, like, Fushi needs to accept that he, need, he needs to rely on people. He is not all-powerful. He can't do it all alone. He can't even do it with just Bond. He needs the help. He needs allies. Uh, and his friends, like, want to help him. Tanari very explicitly here wants to help them. So by hiding this from them, he is kind of, kind of hurting them, uh, emotionally. Like, they want to help. And the helping is far more important than the peace. And Fushi is far more concentrated on making sure they're living peaceful lives and if, than whether or not they're living the lives they want to live, which is to help Fushi, to stop the knockers, to you know, do something important with their lives. Uh, and Fushi is kind of taking that choice away from them. Um, so eventually, I want Fushi to face some kind of comeuppance for all this. Um, I don't know when that would happen. That could happen, you know, next chapter. It could happen five chapters from now. Um, but I hope it happens sooner rather than later. Um, and that on, th on that point, it is just because I want Gugu back as soon as possible. I love him so much. He's such a good boy. Give him the world. Um, but then, yeah, the chapter ends with Izumi's knocker kind of being the, the tender mother that Mizaha wants. Um, but she is still a knocker. And in order to revive the real Izumi, uh, who I think is also kind of important to note, is not exactly a great person, uh, which kind of is some, some thorny issues here. Uh, like, the knocker is kind of a better mom to Mizaha than Izumi ever was. But also, Izumi does still kind of deserve to survive. And that's sort of where Fushi is now. He has to stop the Izumi knocker in order to bring Izumi back to life. And yeah, <laughs> there is a lot to dig into in this chapter. To Your Eternity is a great manga. Uh, it always gives so much to kind of dig into. Um, but I think I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter in the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!